I am now going to get going to get to my my horror on DVD collection. In alphabetical order, I have already done all of my Blu-rays, but now let's get to the DVDs, which are much more. In this video, I'm just going to go uh, be going uh, from letter A to letter C. That way, I don't have to make a, a video that is uh, way too long. I'll have uh, the the rest of the the movies in other videos. We'll start here with this one, Mexican cult classic Alucarda. Here, that's at the Mexican act actress uh, Tina Romay on the cover, and uh, just look at what it says here. More blood, loud screaming, and nudity than any horror film I can think of, right there. And well, pretty good. This is one of my very few. Well, in fact, I only have two of uh, the Mondo Macabro uh, DVDs. So I don't usually get DVDs from uh, specialty um, publishers like this one. But this one is just indeed everything it says. Some. Um, some cool special features. I remember seeing this once on a television and wondering what the hell was this? And then of course when I found it, when I found the, the DVD, I jumped on it. Great movie. Right there, Alucarda. That's if you... It's almost a Dracula spelled backwards, but with an extra A right there at the beginning. All right, love this cover. And now let's go to Amityville 2, The Possession. Now, this is the only Amityville film I have because, well, this is the best one. I absolutely love this movie. This is one of my favorite movies uh, uh, from the 80s. I've watched it, well, I watched it when it originally came out. And yes, it, it did scare me back then. I th still think that it holds up. A lot of people consider this like an exorcist ripoff. And yes, uh, it kind of is, but it's a good ripoff, you know. And uh, it's, in fact, a prequel to Amityville 1. You know, back when when uh, prequels were not really that uh, that common as they are today. And it um, It's about the, the, the possession that of uh, one of the members of the family that causes um, uh, murder and mayhem right there in the famous Amityville house. Another classic from the 80s. Let's get rid of that glare. An American Werewolf in London. You'll see here the title in Spanish because, uh, like I said, I, I have said before, I live in Mexico, which is where I bought many of these movies. Well, basically, in my opinion, the best werewolf movie ever made. You know, the effects here have not been topped uh, yet a great looking werewolf even though that is not the final um, uh, image of the werewolf he, there is a bit more to go in the transformation great movie I usually do not like movies that combine horror and comedy this one does it only very slightly which is a good thing it has a commentary track right there by the actors What can you say? Everybody knows this movie. And from that to one of the worst sequels ever made, An American Werewolf in Paris. Okay, total disappointment. Really let down by this movie. I had such high hopes for it because I thought, you know, it's going to be in Paris. It's going to be like, which is a kind of a, like of a mystical city. And so it's going to have a more of a the the myth and lore of werewolves but sadly no such luck the only good thing about this movie is the actress uh, julie delphi who looks um was incredibly beautiful and her own uh well spoiler here spoiler alert she is a werewolf and her own uh, transformation scene all right other than that this entire movie is just a forgettable the CGI effects, this is, was, was the beginning of, of computer-generated imagery, have just uh, dated this movie completely. So, it's, a, they're pretty, it's a, just a cringe-inducing when, when you watch it now. 
And now we get to, to a very good werewolf movie, uh, Bad Moon, uh, starring Michael Perry, who has been in many a B movie and many a good B movie. You know, this is a, um, one of the better werewolf films. Uh, done on a low budget, yes, but with a good story, some decent acting, and some pretty good effects. The werewolf, uh, you know, of, of when it, he does appear, looks great. One of my favorite. The Bermuda Depths. Here, let's try to get rid of that glare. The Bermuda, just looking at this cover, I mean, you would not think that this is a, a horror movie at all. But uh, And it's really not. It's kind of more of a, of a, a creature feature mixed with a romantic uh, fantasy story. So it's uh, those those genres all mixed together this is in fact a made for tv movie and I, it's one of those uh, archive collection ones so it's uh, one of those uh, dvd roms burn on demand but it still looks pretty good again uh, a movie that i did see you know way back when and, and uh, has become a childhood favorite we really like it we now go to another classic Black Sabbath here with Boris Karloff, which is this is an anthology movie of the three of the three really good stories. The last one is the best one, where Boris Karloff himself plays a vampire. All right, this is an Italian movie directed by none other than Mario Bava. Black Sabbath. And the companion to Black Sabbath, kind of, is, of course, Black Sunday here. Another Mario Bava film starring the great Barbara Steele. Look at that great poster. Love this cover. Black Sunday. A classic. The cinematography here, the black and white cinematography, is really excellent. This is one, one of the ones where, where, I, where I really want to upgrade to the Blu-ray. You know, because I really want to... The best image I can get for this movie. Black Sunday. And now, well, The Beast of Yucca Flats here with uh, Tor Johnson. You can't get any, any more B movie than this. I think a B movie would be stretching it a bit, even. It is what it is The Beast of Yucca Flats. We now go to this, uh, to the Blair Witch 2. Incredibly enough, I do not have Blair Witch 1, even though I do like that movie, you know, Blair Witch 1. Um, well, which in fact, um, real name is uh, the, Blair, the Blair Witch Project, of course. A lot of people hate on it, you know, saying that it's not scary, saying anybody could have made that movie with a, with any handheld camera, maybe. But I, but I still think Blair Witch Project is one of the, one of the greatest horror movies ever made. I stand by it, and I think, and it scared the crap out of me when I saw it in the movie theaters. But anyway, this is Blair Witch 2, which has a very little to do with the Blair Witch 1. Though they are connected. Both stories are connected, but both movies have a very different feel to them. This is a more of a standard movie, but it is still pretty damn good. You know, a bit underrated, in my opinion, and a bit, and I think it, it, is, um, it is hurt by the fact that it is called Blair Witch 2. Maybe if the story had been more of a standalone story, you know, not connected with the first Blair Witch movie, uh, this would have gotten a bit more respect. Uh, uh, check it out again if you haven't done so. It's, uh, I think it's got some pretty good moments. We now have here in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is, I believe, yes, this is the... This is the um, 1970s remake of um, the famous story of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And of course, uh, like many people say, this is the best one. I also think this is the best one and the creepiest one. You know, here, um, uh, Donald Sutherland. Um, who else? I, uh, Jeff Goldblum also appears in this movie. Really good movie. Bram Stoker's Dracula. You know, very, 
uh, a very uh, a beautiful to look at film you know just the, the costumes the sets the the way that the effects were made which were i believe were all practical effects which was a bit rare for a movie from this time period uh, this was a movie from the 90s and uh, by this time um cgi had already started uh, creeping in on on practically all horror movies well all movies in general you know but th this is uh, one of my one of my favorite versions i know it strays a lot from the book from the original story but i don't care it's still a great movie and another one that i want to upgrade to to blu-ray the bride you know this one is all but forgotten this is a, a retelling of the the Frankenstein story and also the Bride of Frankenstein story not really a remake of that uh, of the 1930s classic you know because it really has its own story this one starts with the creation of the bride whereas the 1931 uh, version ends with the creation of the bride here it's a, it's more of a, a story of the uh, of the bride herself not knowing what she is, you know, a reanimated corpse, and then uh, slowly coming to that realization. Right there, we have uh, Sting and Jennifer Beals star in this movie. Brotherhood of the Wolf, uh, a very loosely based on uh, the legend, the French uh, um, myth, legend, and uh, of. Um, the beast of uh, Gévaudan, which is a region in France where a wolf or a wolf-like creature uh, committed murders back there in, um, I believe it was the 17th century France. I'm not very sure about the date there, but around there. This is the two-disc special edition with the director's cut. A very visual movie, really good visuals here. And that, that mixes a lot of genres, you know, horror, a bit of fantasy, uh, the Western even, and also martial arts. Really like it. Le Pac de Loup is the original French title of this French movie. And this movie does have the, the original French language track, which is a good thing. Here we have um, uh, a Mexican movie, La Cámara del Terror, which means the Chamber of Terror. One of the blast movies uh, where starring uh, Boris Karloff. Um, this is one of, uh, I think, maybe one or two that he made in Mexico at the very, very end of his career. All right. The Sh Chamber of Terror. I can't remember if I... Well, I have seen this one. But I just can't remember much about it. Here we have a classic from the from the 90s, Candyman, and here based on the Clive Barker story. You know, the, one of the one of the very best movies from the 90s. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But I'm sure everybody has seen this one. Again, another one that I'd like to upgrade to to Blu-ray, even though this this uh, DVD looks uh, decent. Remember, I got this uh, really really cheap. And. An another personal favorite from the early 80s, The Car. Here we have the Spanish title, El Auto. This movie I could just watch, well, and I have watched it many, many times, and, I could just, and I'm going to continue to watch it again and again. It is just a, a blast. I love The Car. It's uh, uh, Many people have just uh, described it as uh, uh, Jaws on wheels, and that's exactly what it is. You know, The Car, a car that kills people, in the Arizona desert. Oh, I don't know if it's the Arizona desert. Well, in the desert. But anyway, love this movie. Again, another one that I really want to upgrade to Blu-ray. The car. And yet another one that I need to upgrade to Blu-ray. Uh, Cat People. And they, and yes, again, another favorite uh, from, the, from the 80s. You know, a lot of people just uh, criticize this movie because it's very different from the original Cat People. This is, I never considered this a remake. It's just a completely different movie from the original Cat People from the 1940s, I believe it was, or 50s. Well, I don't know. I don't have that that uh, that version, even though I have seen it. And there's really nothing to connect the two stories. 
this is its, its own movie some pretty good practical effects and Nastasha Kinski looks fantastic in this one love it cat people here we have it chained once again we have the Spanish title right there on my DVD got this one I believe um, used from um, a blockbuster when it was still when it was still around and the reason I bought it was because uh, because of the actress here, uh, Julia Ormond and uh, Gina Phillips. Now, Gina Phillips is is uh, the girl from Jeepers Creepers, but in fact, she only appears at the very end of the movie. So it's uh, she's so that was a bit of a letdown. And uh, this movie is really, really dark. It's um, a movie about uh, this uh, serial killer that kidnaps a boy and just pretty, pretty much uh, keeps him chained in his house, you know, as a slave. And later on, wants to have the boy also help him in his crimes. Pretty br brutal movie. Chained. Now we have here a Count Dracula. This is a, a TV miniseries from the uh, BBC. And it uh, aired in the 1970s. And in my opinion, this is the best of all the Dracula movies. You know, the ones that are that are based on the original novel, this is the best one. It um, has a great cast, and Louis Jordan, who is Dracula in this version, is, in my opinion, the absolute best Dracula. The best one. This is uh, long. It is long, because it's a, it's a two-part series, but really, really good. Count Dracula. Get it if you can. And we have here Kronos. I still have the sticker right there from where I bought it at Blockbuster. Of course, uh, this is a this is a Guillermo del Toro's uh, first movie. Has a bit of a vampire theme to it, though it is a bit of a not the usual vampire movie. This is right there. Winner of twenty one prizes around the world. All right. Kronos. And last here for the letter C is a cursed. Right there with uh, uh, Christina Ricci, uh, Joshua Jackson, and Shannon Elizabeth. Directed here by Wes Craven. I remember when I went to see this movie uh, in movie theaters, I had such high hopes. You know, a werewolf movie. And I love werewolves. And directed by Wes Craven. And I thought, wow, that's really going to be good. It's not. This is just another one of those uh, a teen cast um, generic uh, movies. The very fact that they they uh, they put this actor right there, Joshua Jackson, who was uh, at the time famous for being in Dawson's Creek, uh, just tells you where this um, uh, where their heads with that was at. The werewolf uh, is a uh, pretty disappointing. Transformation is not practical. It's made with the uh, computer effects, and it's just decent. And the movie itself just falls flat. All right. Well, that's it for the first portion, the first uh, of my DVD collection up to the letter C. I will go on from the letter D in uh, in a future video. Thank you for watching, and so long.